I used to say with pride to my friends that I would eat out about 12 times a week. And I played golf and there was nothing wrong with a little Peter Stuyvesant extra mild just to make sure everything was okay. Yeah, your body doesn't appreciate that abuse. In this video, we're going to dissect how Kirsten Lehmans went from unfit and overweight to a 241 marathon PB. In it, we're going to share the five secrets to Kirsten's success and the two areas that he could have worked on to make him an even better runner. Kirsten, tell me how you got started. Luck happens to so many people, Brad. I broke up with my girlfriend. And that was, I think, a precipitous event. And then a, a neighbor of mine knocked on my door one Tuesday night. And uh, his name was Graham. And Graham had been training for Ironman. And I used to see this guy. And he used to come into the the you know, into the parking area and take out all the stuff, wetsuit, bike, shoes, bags, goggles. And it is like, what the hell is this guy doing? And eventually I walked over to the guy and I said, hey man, what's the story? And he says, no, he's training for Iron Man. It's like, Iron Man? Like, what, like, what is that? And, you know, he starts with 3.8 Ks and I said, well, that's impossible. Okay, I mean, that's that's flat impossible. And then, you know, you do this ride and I couldn't quite conceptualize 180 K. So that was sort of secondary. And then he says, you throw in a marathon to wrap it up. And like, no ways. And I, I've, you know, I've chatted to him over the next few months. And then one Tuesday night, he knocks on my door and he says, come, we're going to run. And it's like, not a chance. So he says, look, it's a beautiful blue Johannesburg February day. And we're going to go to a cricket oval. And we're going to run 5Ks, by which stage I think I was throwing up. And we're going to drink beers, talk to girls, and sit in the evening sun. And it's like, look, it sounds, it sounds pretty cool, but I, I just don't have shoes. I, like, there's no way I can run 5Ks. And he stood there, and he refused to go. And, uh, you know, eventually I, I go grab a pair of shoes, and once again I find some dodgy shorts and a T-shirt and uh, I get in his car and we go through to RAC. And, uh, you know, the whole vibe at RAC is amazing. You stand on the, on the grass there and, you know, the folks set you off. Um, and I actually enjoyed the run. And uh, we sat for beers and we spoke to girls and we sat in the sun. It was a great evening. And a day later, so I said, look, man, I, I, I got to say I enjoyed it. And he said, you know, come do a couple of runs with us. So I joined their, their, their little group once or twice, not much. And then, you know, I just started to go out on my own. And uh, he had an entry for New York Marathon later that year. And uh, he had got it through Sports Vendo, one of those companies. And uh, I said, I'm going to do New York Marathon. And, you know, I, I got a program off the net. I mean, no science, man. No science. I, I got, a, got a program and uh, slowly built it up. I went through all the normal story. You know, firstly, I lost weight, which was amazing. I shaved off all my hair, bought some Adidas running glasses, which I thought was basically the acknowledgement of being an athlete and uh, a watch and uh, I towed the line in New York and uh, I ran 327 had the greatest day on earth I, I I shed tears running into Central Park I was besides myself with joy Lindsay what was the key to Kirsten's success and what can we learn from that for everyone else watching this video well the thing that he did brilliantly was that he really started for where he was at he had basically not done any exercise for years and he really started slowly and built up over quite a long period of time. Why is that the key to Kirsten's success, starting slowly? Essentially, when Kirsten started, his muscles, tendons, ligaments, they had taken no load for a really long period of time. And our body has a pretty strict use it or lose it because essentially humans are optimization engines so your body is not going to work hard to keep tissues alive and functional that it doesn't need and so effectively 
you just start to atrophy. You lose muscle, tendons become weaker, ligaments become weaker. And so by loading up slowly over a longer period of time, you actually allow all those soft tissues to slowly but surely strengthen, improve the density to increase. And that's what allows you to get better without getting injured and you can continue for a much longer period of time to remain consistent. Yeah, absolutely and I think one of the things that Kirsten did too was stop smoking uh, and the second was really cut back on his alcohol. When I'm focusing on comrades which I really did every year I have three months of no booze. Um, that is the first thing okay I mean we all love a beer but that's just a terrible calorie and you get that out of the way straight up and honestly you should do longer than that, but you know, we all just South Africans and we want to have a beer. So three months, no booze before comrades. That is just the first simple no brainer. Take that stuff out of the way, make it six months better for you. You get the rewards where you feel better, you're running better, everything feels better. So Lindsay, obviously smoking is bad for us. I mean, I quit smoking when I started running as well, but what's the deal with alcohol? Yeah, so Brad, essentially with alcohol, there are two reasons why it compromises your ability to improve while you are training. And the first of those is that alcohol actually inhibits your body's ability to burn fat for exercise. And it therefore means that you need to burn carbohydrates, which causes your blood sugar to drop and that stimulates your appetite. And it stimulates your appetite for high sugary foods because your blood glucose levels have dropped. So in the short term, it's preventing you from burning fat. And in the medium to longer term, it stimulates you to eat the wrong types of food on a continual basis. And that impact lasts probably between um, four and eight hours after alcohol consumption. Look, that doesn't mean that you must never drink alcohol, but it does mean that if you are serious about your running and you want to perform well and or are running to lose weight um, or to be healthy, that you should be moderating your, your alcohol intake. The second thing that it does is that alcohol actually dehydrates you. And we know that if your body is dehydrated, it can't function optimally. Your muscles are drier and more brittle. And so you also promote more damage to the muscles themselves physically, especially again, if you are drinking alcohol excessively. So I think the message there is that you obviously can drink alcohol, but it must be in moderation. And when it comes to alcohol, a balanced alcohol diet isn't a beer in both hands. It's all about <laughs> moderation. The next thing that Kirsten did was really get bitten by the fitness bug and got into triathlon. Once again, got talking to the guys um, and Graham was not training for Ironman. I don't think that year, but I still chatted to the chap and uh, it was like, uh, I'm going to do Ironman. And uh, it it is no problem to enter. This is 2008. Okay. No, no problem to enter in PE. Uh, I entered and I, I had an incredible Ironman. Lindsay, I know even for myself, when I was running at my best, it was when I was doing triathlons. What is it about swimming and, and cycling that makes you a better runner? Look, Brad, it really contributes to your cardiovascular fitness in a meaningful way. But what is really important about it is that it reduces the eccentric forces. So again, if you are new to running and those soft tissues still need to develop, then cycling and swimming or any non-impact type of cardiovascular exercise really helps you to get cardiovascularly fitter, but reduces that eccentric load or the pounding that comes from running so that you can allow your body to adapt slower to the stimulus, particularly of running. And you mentioned that you actually ran at your best when you were doing triathlon. And really that's a lesson to be learned that for in particular um, social or amateur athletes that are serious about their running is that sometimes because our recovery is compromised by our lifestyle, our need to work, I need to be on our feet for a long period of time, that doing cross training is a really good substitute for doing too much running so that you can get more work done, but without causing the same amount of damage. Kirsten was also a very type A personality and that really did show in his consistency of training. Brad, um, 
with time, I came up with a concept called the fridge. And uh, probably a lot of people who know me know about the fridge. There are rules on the fridge. And you are obliged to follow the rules of the fridge. Some rules are rules that people don't like, okay? Uh, but they're good rules. And the first rule was that if the fridge says, go run 12 Ks in the morning, that's what you go do. And if it's raining, you go run 12 Ks. So consistency is, consistency is everything. We, we, all, we all know that. But, you know, I get so frustrated people, with people, Brad, when they say, you know, they didn't make their goal. And I go, how consistent were you? And they say, no, it's pretty good. So I say, well, just, you know, how good is pretty good? I'm sure, I'm, I, you know, I may have missed a session or two a week. So, like, are you doing 10 sessions a week? No, I'm doing, you know, five or so. So you're basically doing 50 to 60% of your training, and you're calling that pretty good. That is a poor performance. So if you're justifying that to anybody, then you're lying to yourself and no one else. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's nothing that beats consistently. We know it. But it just irritates the hell out of me when people pay lip service to it and don't do it. So as much as Kirsten was winging it early on, it wasn't long before he found some help. You know, if consistency is the most important thing for running, I'd probably say being part of amazing club system is the second most important. And joining that network and learning from people. So, you know, it may be a formal thing like, you know, working with, with a coach, that's, I mean, clearly a great thing. But being part of a club and learning from other people, and then I started to get a little bit of feedback. Oh, no, Kirsten is not, you know, totally rubbish. Lindsay, those were two really big keys to Kirsten's success, is obviously the following a training plan and the consistency. Why are those two things so important in becoming a better runner? Look, the one thing that we know, and we've seen it over and over again with thousands of athletes that we work with is that the key to success is consistency. The longer you can put together pieces of training blocks, weeks, months, and years, the more improvement you'll see and the more sustained that will improvement will be over a long period of time. So in some ways, Kirsten was quite lucky in that he stumbled into a really good group, which helped with the motivation It helped get him out there. And then of course, being a type A personality, once he had an actual plan to follow, he literally didn't miss a session. Now that can have its own problems in certain situations. But you know, when you are starting slowly and building up and like literally ticking off every single session that you do, you are going a long, long way to being successful in what you set out to do. Yeah, absolutely. So the first of the areas where Kirsten really could have been better at is actually part of what we do at Coach Perry and we are huge advocates of it. Brad, my thing with, 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 with the concept of strength training is that every minute that I'm holding a barbell or I don't know, stretching an ankle is a minute I'm not running. Just you saying it right now, it irritates the living hell out of me, okay? That there's something that could have made my running better because if you told me that I must change shoes or do repeats or do hills, I'd go, every goddamn hill in Bryanston is going to be murdered from here on out, which is how it worked, okay? But I never did strength training and it frustrates me. I, it really does. And I'm nearly blaming Lindsay for not forcing me to do it. What could Kirsten have done differently when it comes to strength training, Lindsay? Well, the first thing he could have Let's done do was it. actually do it. <laughs> but the reality is that by doing strength training, he could actually have shortcutted slightly that slow progressive buildup because through strength training, we can in fact increase the physical strength of our muscles, tendons, ligaments, and joints. But really importantly, he could have improved his performance greatly because the stronger we are, the more resistant we are to injury, the more efficiently we run, the more power we can generate, and therefore the faster we can move. So strength training has a dual purpose. It's there to minimize the risk of injury and allow us to be consistent for a longer period of time, but it's also there to improve running mechanics, efficiency, 
and power so that we can run faster for longer. So the good news is we've put together a free strength training plan for you that you can do at home with no equipment needed. And all you need to do is click on the link on screen right now to download it. Having lost a lot of weight, it's easy to get obsessive. And especially being a type A personality, it's easy to fall into certain traps when it comes to nutrition. And that's exactly what happened to Kirsten. I've gone a little bit too far at times. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to see how much power I could generate on the bike. Um, so I decided to lose weight. So I got one of these calorie counting apps. You should do it and you shouldn't do it. It scares the living hell out of you how many calories are in everything. Okay. Um, every single thing we have, a bit of butter, you'll get yourself screwed up if you go too deeply into it. But I, I, I got deeply into it and uh, I've started to feel terrible. Um, and I know people may say, oh, well, it's not surprising you're not eating a lot. But it wasn't that, man. It is like I, I, I was doing a run from Wallingford. And it was about a 45K run. And I was two or three Ks into the run. And I was running along the Thames. And I stopped. And I was buggered. And then I ran a couple more Ks. And I stopped. And the run took ages. And I hated every minute of it. And I said, no, something's wrong. And I went to the doctor and the doctor, you know, did some did the standard blood tests. And he said, look, I, I want you to come in um, and you, you're going to hospital. Um, you're going to Royal Berkshire. And I'm concerned that you have, you may have cancer. Okay. We haven't done the cancer markers, um, but you're so badly anemic and your white blood cell count is so terrible I'm seriously worried that, about you. So I spent a day in hospital doing tests and, uh, you know, the pipes through the top and the pipes through the bottom. Um, and uh, fortunately, that is all clear. Um, but uh, I was, I'd taken it too far. I I was eating soup only and a to piece of toast for breakfast and a piece of toast for supper. And uh, apparently that's not enough and certainly not enough iron. And, you know, I think that's perhaps another thing for us runners where w we all think that toast and peanut butter is a three-course meal. And uh, apparently there are some other things that we should be eating. God forbid a vegetable, um, you know. Um, or in my case, more meat, weirdly enough, for a South African. Um, but I, I fixed that, and then I ran. I actually ran Berlin a few weeks later and had a had a nice run. Um, didn't expect much, but got pleasantly surprised. Lindsay, nutrition is key not just to running performance, but long term health too. Absolutely, Brad. And nutrition is one of the cornerstones for Coach Perry in terms of recovery and looking after the athlete so that you can meet your training demands and stay healthy over the long term. And essentially, we split that up into two areas and the first is that we need to provide enough energy to be able to do the exercise that we are doing and to provide for the exercise and the second aspect of it is we need to eat healthy and well over the long term so that we provide the building blocks so that we can repair the damage that we've done during training and improve the organism us so that we can stay healthy and run well for years to come. So Lindsay, essentially the key is knowing what to eat and, and how to feel probably to be the best runner you can be. And the truth of the matter is so few runners know exactly how to do that. And the good news is if you watch this video next, we've put together a video that'll show you exactly how to feel for, during and after exercise so you don't miss anything and also so you don't end up in hospital like Kirsten did.